When I do presentations, I am frequently asked questions and one of the hot topics is the NAS. What NAS should I buy is often replied by me with the question, do you need a NAS? Often they don't. Let me make clear that I don't have any objection against NASs. In a number of situations it's a better choice, but in other situations it's not. Let's first discuss what a NAS is. A NAS stands for Network Attached Storage and is often described as a group of hard disks co connected to one or more computers over the home network. That is a perfect description of the function of the NAS. But if you look really good you see that a NAS actually is a small Linux computer that has as main task to combine two or more disks in RAID and share the resulting volume. The cheaper models often run on simple processors like a dual core Intel Celeron. More expensive types might have a quad core Pentium. When you approach the area between 1500 and 2000 euros, i3 and i5 processors become available. Now if you only want to share a volume holding music and perhaps some documents, a Celeron is more than sufficient. But as soon as you try to run music server software on it, you might consider other options. All I say in this video is related to using audio renderers in some form or another. Currently two groups of audio renderers are popular. Those that do their own indexing and those that rely on the indexing on a computer. Sonos, Bluesound, Elac Discovery, Auralic, NAD and many others fall in the first category. Although I would still prefer to connect a hard disk directly to the renderer, a NAS will work just as fine and gives less equipment in the living room. Some hard disk enclosures might be noisy, another reason to use a NAS. The NAS can be anywhere in your house where access to the network is available and the envi environment is not too hostile to electronics. I wouldn't place it in a shed or other moist location. The second group is the group that uses the computer to do the hard work. Squeezebox, DLNA, UPnP AV, Audivana, Rune, JRiver and many others. In this group there are two ways of working. Have the stereo connected directly to the computer or use what is now known as a network audio adapter. In fact, the Squeezebox was the first to issue a network audio adapter or NAA. A computer in the house runs the LMS software that indexes the music. Using the remote or an app, you can browse the index and select the music you want to hear. Then the LMS software sends the audio bits to the Squeezebox together with metadata to be displayed. DLA works about the same, only here the software is not per se aimed at audio since DLA started off as video streaming application. That is why it is slow in browsing and doesn't support gapless playback. Luckily server software like Minim Server, although difficult to set up, is very usable while many DLA renderers solve the gapless playback problem. The computer the DLA server is running on can also function as a renderer. So here you have the option to place the computer in the living or use a separate renderer or streamer if you prefer that name in the living. The same goes for Rune, JRiver and soon also for Odivana. Odivana currently needs to be connected directly to the DA converter, but an NAA solution is in the make. By the way, UPnP AV is in practice identical to DLA. Self-indexing renderers like Bluesound, Sonos, Aurelic and the like are limited in what their index can hold due to hardware limitations. For most people the capacity is more than sufficient, but there does lie a difference. On the other hand, using self-indexing renderers with a directly attached hard disk or NAS connected over the network is relatively simple to set up. Setting up software on a computer, having the computer running when you play music and so on is a bit too far for some. But for those that are willing to accept the computer to do the music library, there are advantages. Now again, there are two ways of working. 
If you use your laptop connected directly to your DA converter or AV receiver, a NAS might be more handy since it can be placed out of the way while it is automatically hooked up to your laptop the moment it connects to the network. But I like my music to be apart from all other computer activities in the house, with the exception of the automatic backup of course. So I bought an Intel NUC that runs on a 2 core hyperthreading i3 processor at 2.3 GHz, installed a 128GB mSATA SSD drive and 8GB of RAM. I then installed Linux Mint, although I had no previous experience with Linux, and installed the Linux version of Rune. I could have used Windows 10 as well, but since I only wanted to run Rune, I saw no point in spending 105 euros on an operating system. I then connected an 8TB external hard disk, in this case an 8TB drive in a USB 3 housing since I wanted the setup to be mobile for when I do demos. Otherwise I would have connected the oldest Drobo, a second gen, to it. Now I back up the 8TB drive to the Drobo. Having the Drobo do the daily work would in general be preferable since when a drive dies it keeps working, also when a new drive is entered. If the 8TB drive fails, I need to wait until the backup is restored to the new drive and that can take a very long time. Let's say I would buy a 4 bay NAS that is speedy enough to run room. It would cost me about 1800 euros excluding the disk. The Intel NUC i3 including SSD and memory costed me 425 euros and a Drobo 5C that has 5 slots would cost me 399 euro excluding disks. That's a total of 824 or about half what a NAS will cost you. Now a NAS can be faster when it comes to other applications, especially if alternatives to the generally used SMB protocol are used. But who does? And for audio, even DSD256 files, the NUC setup is quick enough. The heavy room database is stored on the SSD and if you would prefer DLA or Squeezebox, you could have them run on the SSD. The NUC runs comfortably on Linux Mint, a light version of Ubuntu Linux. And the installation was a matter of simply following the instructions on the Linux Mint and Rune sites. Only when you want to maintain the NUC over the network using remote desktop and want to access the music files over the network from another computer using SMB, you need some puzzling. It took me, as a novice, half a day. But again, you could also use a Windows operating system. Even a Mac Mini i5 at 2.6 GHz with 256 SSD combined with a Drobo 5C would set you back 1450 8 euros in my country. By the way, all prices I mention are in euros and including 21% VAT, that's the European equivalent of sales tax. Another reason not to use NASAs is the way networks work. It's where chaos reigns. If a network device wants to send a packet of data to another device, it simply sends it on the network with a header containing the IP address. There's no handshake prior to sending, but the sending party just waits for a confirmation from the receiving party that the packet has arrived. If that didn't happen, within a given time the sending party simply sends it again, knowing that if the receiving party did ignore the packet, it is busy doing other things. But the same goes for the router and if used switches. Affordable routers and switches might do a gigabyte per second if the routing is simple, but as soon as it, there's a lot of traffic, they often lag behind the official specs, so I'm told by a network expert. If audio is the only thing that happens on the network, there will be no problem. But if your computer starts downloading an update while your tablet is downloading new mail and your smartphone is backing up photos to the cloud, that might already cause problems. And then I skip the possibility that your computer savvy son is watching Netflix. You have to realize that in contrast with most computer data, 
Audio is time sensitive. If you load a large photo file, it's not that important whether it takes 0.5 second or a full second. But for audio, that is disastrous. So you want to keep the load on the network as low as possible. When you use Rune, LMS or DNA server program in combination with a NAS, the server program has to fetch the music file on the NAS and send it to the renderer. In other words, all your files have to travel over the network twice. Using a DAS does re reduce the network load caused by audio files with 50%. Of course you are right when you say that a 1 gigabit network must be able to handle two streams of 1.44 megabits per second. But if you use high res files at 24 bit 192 kilohertz, it's already 9.2 megabits and 24 bit 384 is 18.4 megabit. And you need uninterrupted data throughput, not average data throughput. In my 20 years of experience with audio over a home network, I have learned that a standard 1 gigabit home network can not always provide sufficient bandwidth for uninterrupted audio. Things have become clever over time and protocol between the music server and the NAA might be protected better by modern techniques. But whether that is also the case for the music the server software gets from the NAS, I don't think so. For the same reason, it is also important to limit the devices on the music server computer, like my NAC. Only connect the drive you really need. Since a keyboard and a mouse are not needed once the server software is installed, simply disconnect it. I was also asked whether I use my NUC with a linear power supply. I have tried it but heard no difference. The NUC is about 15 meters away from my stereo. I don't think the HF pollution will travel that far. I do use a linear power supply on the switch that is close to my stereo, for that did matter. If you really want to keep it simple, do not have a large music collection and want to use your central storage for other things too. A simple NAS might be the affordable solution for you. If you want a more sophisticated solution, you could use a DAS connected to a desktop computer and share some volumes you want to access anywhere in the house. But if you are really serious about audio, a setup like mine, solely for audio, is the best I could find until now. I use the SOTM SMS200, the Sonori Micro Rendu and for my low end set a Raspberry Pi 3B with Hi-Fi Berry Digi Plus Pro. The first two are fed by S-Booster or Ultracaps linear power supplies, the Raspberry Pi using the iFi iPower. All acoustic noise and electric noise the computer might generate are far from my stereos and the audio is clocked very close to the stereos. Price wise it might seem like a lot of money, but I challenge you to find me a CD deck at the same price that performs equal to the same deck. Well, the computer solution offers far more convenience. But if you prefer the CD player that's fine too, as long as you enjoy the music. I want to thank you for your support of the channel. Please feel free to ask me questions as long as it's not a direct buying advice. And again, whatever you do, enjoy the music. And you need un And you need un and you need un and